Well, do keep uh, that passage open, and if uh, you're here as a family, do uh, may the, the parents just show their children uh, where we're at and uh, the verses that we've got. During this whole month, we're looking at actually people that Jesus meets. Well, more actually, more specifically, we're looking at people Jesus calls to himself. People who may not have had any interest in Jesus, but then he calls them and they follow him. So they're wonderful stories of how people start following Jesus. And the very last verse in our passage shows us that that is exactly what Jesus is doing. It says, for the Son of Man, that's Jesus, came to seek and save that Uh, save what was lost. Jesus has been doing that ever since. He came to look for Zacchaeus and bring him to himself. And Jesus has been doing that ever since. He's doing it today. He comes to look for us. And he comes to save us for himself. And in this story, Jesus is looking for a man. And the man's name is Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, we're told, in the verses, is a very, very rich man. From his job, he has made lots and lots of money. And it's not necessarily made him very popular. Because what happens... whole load for himself, and he keeps doing it. He just takes money from people for himself. So when Jesus says he is very, very rich, that is right. But what it is about is him wanting things for himself. He grabs the money for himself. He is very rich, but he is very greedy. But the interesting thing we're told is Jesus wants to see Jesus. Uh, Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. And he was a short man, we're told, so he ran ahead of the crowds and he went up into a tree so he could see Jesus. Now, I remember a long, long time ago, it it was a huge amount of time ago, when I was very young, And, of course, we didn't have um, sort of videos, YouTube and all that, where we could see people very easily. I was very young, and the Queen was coming to our town. And everybody got terribly excited. It was a huge event. And I remember, I don't know why we went to this place, but I remember we went to a bridge just outside the town because we were told the Queen was going to come in on her special train and would come under that bridge. So we went... And we waited, and we waited, and then we could hear the train. And so we got very excited. We looked over the bridge, whoosh, the train went straight past. Of course, it was a steam train, and we couldn't see anything. But the Queen was on it, apparently. We wanted to see the Queen. And that's what we had to do. We had to go, and although we couldn't actually see her, only a very few people would have been able to meet her. But we wanted to go and see her. And that's what we had to do. And I think it was a bit like that for Zacchaeus, actually. There's nothing to say that he wanted to know Jesus. He just wanted to see him. And so he went to find a place so he could see Jesus. But it was no more than that. But Jesus had other ideas, you see. Jesus, we're told in our verses, if if you have a look at the verse verse number 5, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said said to him, Zacchaeus, come down, 
immediately. I must stay in your house today. He calls Zacchaeus. He says, come down. And he wants to be, go to his home. It's an amazing thing. Because that's exactly what Zacchaeus did. And you know what? Jesus has been doing that ever since. He knows us. He called Zacchaeus by name. That would have been a surprise for Zacchaeus, wouldn't it? What's his name? And he calls him, he calls him by name. He calls him down. And he goes to his home. And Jesus has been doing that ever since. He knows each of us by name. And he will call us. He calls us to come to him. And he wants to come into our lives to change us. And that's what we're told did happen. Zacchaeus came down he w and he brought Jesus to his home. And now everything has changed. It's an extraordinary transformation, isn't it? Everything has now changed for, for Zacchaeus. You see, once we're told he wanted to grab the money from the people and keep it for himself. And what are we told now? He takes all this money that he has taken from the people and he gives it back to them. One after the other. He promises that if he had taken money from people, he would give four times much as much back. Instead of grabbing, he gives. He wants to give back. Jesus has truly changed Zacchaeus. And that's what happens when Jesus comes into our lives. He changes us. And instead of people who want things for ourselves, we want to give out to others. Now I wonder what that could mean for us, just in these few moments now left. And I've got three words. James, we're going to put them up on here. Just think of these three words. Want say and think. You see, we want the next computer, don't we? Or the new dress, or the designer shirt, or the latest phone. We want. We want things for ourselves. We want our friends. Uh, we want what our friends, perhaps at school, have got. Or what our colleagues at work have or what our neighbours have. We look at their car on the drive that they so wonderfully clean every week, and we think, that must be an amazing car, I must have one. But when Jesus comes into someone's life, you see, it all changes. It changes everything. Instead of wanting things, we want to share things. And we become givers and we give to others what we have. Then the second thing is what we say. Jesus, when Jesus comes to live in us, it actually transforms how we speak. We, we're sort of want to be, we, we often say things that want to make us feel more important, don't we? We want to make ourselves look better. Better than others. We may even tease people to make ourselves more popular. We may use words to make people feel unimportant so we feel very important. But when Jesus comes into our lives, it changes everything. We now say things to build others up, to make them feel wanted, important, and valued. Instead of saying, did you see what I got in a mark in an exam? You say, how did you get on? Because we're interested in them. We want to give instead of get. And then the last thing, think. How often do we think to ourselves, I wish I could be better at, well, it may be any number of things for us, couldn't it? I wish I could be better at reading or at numbers or at friendships. It may be a whole load of other things, but when Jesus comes into our life, it changes everything. We're able to say, thank you, Jesus, for making me, me. Thank you for the gifts you have given me. May these gifts 
be a blessing to others. May I give and give and give to others. Can I, as I finish, can I just say something for the adults? Very quickly, it was a really interesting phrase that I think comes up in verse 5 and verse 9. In verse 5, Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must come to your house today. And then in the last verse, uh, in verse 9, sorry, today salvation has come to this house. Isn't that interesting? I found that really interesting. Zacchaeus, you see, has become a Christian. He has been changed inside out. But the blessing of his conversion extends, I think, further than himself. Jesus comes into Zacchaeus' life, but the fruit of this event is wonderfully experienced by others as his home becomes a blessing to others. So as we are changed by Jesus in the way that we, the things that we want, the things that we say, and the way that we think, others will experience the fragrance of Jesus, the gentleness, the truth, and the care of who he is. I'm going to say a short prayer, and then we'll sing another song. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into Zacchaeus' life, and thank you that you've been doing just this ever since. Please speak to each one of us, come into our lives, and just like Zacchaeus, change us into people who are generous to others because of Jesus. Amen.